agreements. We have seen in the uh, previous case that you could uh, specify different formatting uh, elements, different attributes, uh, different uh, types of headings, and then for paragraph, different attributes. And then for every attribute, we have certain property and then a value for a property. We have also seen formatting uh, elements to frame our text. It, italic, boldface, underlined, uh, deleted part like inward. So all different tags we have. Seen. We have seen this important part called styles, right? So this is style uh, attribute of the any particular element to how your uh, color, uh, say for example, what, what should be the font. So in order to uh, see what should be the background, you should remember this uh, property name, right? So there are certain property names which comes along with particular attribute. This style is an important attribute, I will basically call it. For any uh, particular element, so that would basically uh, change the appearance of this particular content of the element, right? So here, element is body, and the content of the elements basically are is all different tags like images, body, uh, things, pages, so on. So this style the attribute is basically one of the important aspect for reading the HTML documents. So let us use this style in some another way. Let us jump to something called the style sheet. Uh, this HTML style sheet, previously we have seen that this HTML style sheet uh, is only for the purpose of rendering the contents and colors, fonts, uh, borders, uh, right? So basically, display what, how you are. Uh, Content or static content. So, CSS basically stands for the cascading style sheet, right? It helps you to uh, save a lot of work because it can control the layout of the multiple pages at once, right? So, uh, if you define a, a particular style sheet in, in, in particular format, specifying its attributes and all. Then you can use that style sheet uh, for making a reference that a particular element should use or uh, different objects of the HTML should use style sheet. See that in coming uh, I mean, text. As said, the CSS is used to format the layout of the page. Uh, you can control the color, font, size of the text can also uh, control the spacing between the elements, how elements are positioned and laid out, what background images, what background colors to be used, and different displays for different devices and screen size and much more. So that's the important part, the different display for different devices and screen size. So this basically CSS will help you to render your contents not only on the uh, a screen monitor, but it could uh, uh, display your contents according to the uh, aspects ratio of the uh, devices you are using. <coughs> so cascading style sheet, it, 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 why the word this cascading uh, basically means that whatever the styles you have applied to an parent, parent element, will also apply to all the children elements within the parents, right? If you have applied a particular uh, style to the body, right? We have seen that body part. If a font is been used in blue color, then all the paragraphs, headings, images, tables, right? That would be displayed in particular or font or color format or background color. If if those elements are closed, the body element of this one. So that what basically means that 
cascading means that the rail supplied it to the parent element right so within the body you have different element so that's then it will body will become the parent element will also apply to all the children's element within the parent there are different ways of uh, specifying the style for the particular element or the bunch of element right so when we call a bunch of element with the same name we will come with that division and classes yeah this is this particular part html classes and html ids right so this is basically the bunching of things into one see that how do we apply the css to the particular uh, class and a particular element using this id and classes so but let us at the first time uh, here look at the what are the different ways of specifying style sheet okay. specifying the style sheet in the sense that right, whether you want the external file to be loaded to render the contents uh, mostly in a structured manner so this uh, <laughs> this uh, this uh, external is basically uh, most of the commercial sites you will refer to this external way of specifying the style sheet because this once you have designed a style sheet that same formatting could be used for different web pages or different elements that's why once you write a style sheet uh, 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 using the css extension that style sheet could be used to render or format other contents not for the same page but all the different but when you have you don't have to bother about other pages or other document to only a static page right so in that particular way in that particular scenario within the document itself or within the page itself would specify the styles of rendering the different styles for rendering elements right so that's called as the line way of specifying the styles we have seen the previous example where for body uh, we have specified the background color or for a font of a particular style so here itself you could specify so by using the style attribute inside the html remember that that style attribute will come in the opening tag of the particular element then we have the internal way of using the style sheet within the head section you can specify something and then a particular element will refer to that style right uh, that's basically you specify the within the head section that you specify some styles and then those elements will refer to those styles right so and third is the external way that means you just uh, create a dot css file it's it's dot css file, file is basically simple text file where but the extension will be you need the extension with dot css extension for that particular file the most common way to add css is to keep the styles in external css file right let us see this external c uh, afterwards for this page itself we will see the external css files this uh, which w3 schools uh, file the most common way to add css is to keep the styles in external css file however in the tutorial we will design an external styles for the here to demonstrate here to try yourself this is first example of inline for here what we are doing we are specifying the style for one particular so you could specify the style for different elements of the color so sure this is the style attribute is the one of the way of specifying the roots uh, 
tile for a particular element. Then we will refer to internal CSS, this is the most important part. We will see here body. We are closing this into the head section. For body, we have a background color. For H1, we have color Q. And for paragraphs, we have the color red. So within the body, whatever you do, it will come with the background color as powder blue, right? Whatever the elements for uh, for for H1, I have the color as blue. For E, you have a color called red. So if you add one more P to this one, so every P will be having this color. If you want different, then here itself you have to do. What we have done, we have standard way of things for body. We have the color, whatever appear in the body. So there are two elements coming in the body H1. So its background color will be powder. Let's try this first, the internal CSS. Could see whatever you render within the body. So everything background color you have done with heading its font color is blue. With P its font color is red. So let us add one more paragraph. So there are two P's, right? You could see there are two P's. For all the P's, your color will be red. So because you have specified here every P over here, uh, color equal to red, let us try to override this. That if we... I Yeah, it can, you can override a specific you uh, element. So here, what we have done, here our second content comes out to be black and override. If you don't override over here, then it will take by default for every paragraph, it will take whatever you have specified at this style sheet, right? This is the inline basic things that everything will be rendered according to the style sheet which you have. Next important part is to specify the external CSS. So you could see here, uh, <clears throat> we are specifying the, the external style sheet is used to define the style for many HTML pages. So what you do, you basically uh, use this uh, link L attribute, and then you specify here as a style sheet, and then what is the reference href, you snap come back your style sheet will so this is relative that means your style sheet is stored over there so it will refer to all this uh, 
style sheet for rendering our content. Let us see what we have done in this style sheet. This is the style sheet. In the style sheet you have done, your body will appear in powder blue color. All your ones appear in blue color. All your will appear. Paragraph will appear. Color will appear. So the same style sheet would be used for different uh, pages, right? You don't need to specify every time. So it will help you kind of reuse everything. So that's what the external style sheet is. Make sure that the file should be called the .css file. So will for your uh, web page, page static page which you will be designing now. So please not uh, use this in line and internal way of specifying the uh, CSS. But you will be using this uh, external way of specifying the CSS. So you have to write this CSS file. And if it wants to be used for a different object of the HTML, you will so many objects you will use in your pages, you will have uh, different CSS for this one. So for, yeah, for, for uh, learning this is CSS, uh, there are tons of properties. Uh, that means this what we are specifying here is the property and attributes. There are tons of properties for rendering things on the page. So put some of the is color. There are different font families, font size and border. You could see here inline and they have specified color, font size, font family. Then CSS border property, you have a border property that around the paragraph a border will be here, border property with two pixels. So border property is specified in terms of pixels, right? Solid blue color. This is, let us try to increase the pixel size also. Check whether the it runs. You can see. So this all we need to remember and different properties of the what what could be different padding is here would see most of the pages you will specify this padding that means what should be the space before starting the object and but make sure this padding spans the entire uh, document so the border is two pixel and then space these are all uh, these are spanning the complete document right these elements are spanning the entire document 30 pixels padding so so padding property defines the space between the text and the border so this is 30 pixel extent uh, border. This, yeah, this is, I think, 30 pixels. Let's try this. Make it 60 pixels. That means it is increasing the size in both the directions. So from the top also it is increasing the size. From the bottom also it is in from the left margin also it has been uh, increasing the size with 60 pixels how standards you have a margin property also are coming next the css margin property defined as the margin space outside the border this is the margin space outside the border means is 50 let us change it to 7 this heading this border i hope that will facing is
you could uh, use salute that means uh, somebody websites so external style sheets can be referenced with the full url or with the relative part to the current this is a full url where you find the urs so it would be your page pages where enabled sites kind so there you could store this css so you have to specify the complete path or you could have a relative path here stm current websites so here also you could specify these are simply the path if if you want you are you don't want your separate folder for the css pages then you no need to specify uh, relative part this you are much comfortable of understanding this paths and all so in summary we have these different elements so style attribute style element these are the different properties of css right try this let us go to the some of the other things the things when you specify the hyperlinks so hyperlinks are basically the way of specifying the way of uh, jumping from one document to the another document right so if you have you remember that we have studied this uh, http protocol right in the http protocol there is uh, some method which basically has with the name called redirection so in the redirection you could basically see that description that that is redirecting you to some other page right so it's so that's where exactly this hyperlinks are coming into so in your response you have a link over there click on the link then to the response part the response message you will have the redirection part you have this link over there so we have seen the tag for the link is hyphen a defines the hyperlink so href is basically you are telling url so you will go to this url this link text specify what exactly what text to appear when you want that exactly so here href you will have the complete complete url of where what you want link destination it's it's basically telling you the link destination you href the link text is a part of text that will be visible to reader so just an example go to w3 school some of the attributes let's focus on some of the attributes so you could see that sometimes uh, when you open the link there are two or three different ways of uh, opening the link one is whether we want it to be opening in the same window second way is you want to open it in the different window so do you want the other instance of the browser to be invoked kind of thing you want you don't want to lose your current so behavior of uh, opening of a new link could be specified by using target attribute of the uh, it so so by default the link page will be displayed in current browser window so uh, when we try so uh, try yourself what we are doing this is basically a link you are getting a new tab right 
so ultimately this try yourself is you could have some link over there specified over there and then when you click on this particular link new page has been created you are directing some kind of editor so on that page a editor has been in or you can even think of that there is a button uh, on this particular page but in that particular case is of event handling we are not uh, talking about the event handling for our reference for the time being try yourself is the text which we are appearing and it's taking us to some page where the editor has been implemented for this particular right shall we see Yeah, I got it. Now see uh, this uh, try yourself. It has been highlighted over here. The text. I don't know whether you are able to see. Uh, this capital. This uh, ever this uh, example currently we are highlighting. Uh, try yourself. You have a class name given to you. Then you have href. That means a complete. Uh, URL is being specified over here from where what need to be invoked. So it's uh, try HTML link some some file right dot ESP right A file is there which need to be now uh, it's telling you that your target activity is underscore blank and then you have this text tries yourself right. This you could see that and then your division gets closed right. Division. Uh, so we'll see this division part later on. Yes, we can specify this. Look at the code over here that we have some external link been specified over, right? Here you can specify the all you. dot CSS file you could see on the uh, window I am scrolling but you have to check exactly the content yourself uh, by default there is this this particular text appearing so by default you can see here then you have a table 
created list is being created over here yes see so this is how you can also check your contents so let me close over here so let's go to the target attribute here you can see in our case with the example we have seen it opens its target attribute was a blank that is when when you specified it as a blank it opens a document in a new window so that's why we have seen here when you click on this it's creating a new window right try editor so it's what the try itself is by default open the document in the same window or tab as it is say if it is self have done then uh, this window will have over right or no here you will not be having a window so open the document same tab or window as was clicked and you have a target attribute as blank open the document to window or a tab once the document in the parent frame yes, this frame we haven't seen so it opens the document in the parent frame and and then uh, underscore top opens the document in full body of the, the window so if you have used the concepts of the frames and all then you will uh, try this one try this blank we have done so it will open this new Parent underscore. To be opened over here because hyperlink is on this page. Let's try self. Need to specify this over here then and only then similarly we have seen this uh, window so absolute url were so relative with both examples above are you absolute url are using here the absolute urls you can also use your relative relative you are so you, you you do not need this complete set we basically know what relative and absolute so there are some situations where you don't want exactly the link or you want us to people to click on the image and then we'll go directly to this uh, specified site so to use the image as a link just put the image tag inside the so this is where you want this you can image its alternate attribute style and so on link to an email address send mail kind of bottom button as a link so this button element we have seen haven't seen right now but when we deal with the forms you will see this bottom elements the button elements this is what what you have to this is basically called event handling aspects of the document what we are doing i am i am i am moving the but uh, mouse over the so this is one an event if i click over here then there is an event could see here on click event right so when you have a button on the form you have focus on the form 
So if you right click on this button, so right now if you have specified some button and then that button has the caption, how to handle that button. So, so if, if I click on this particular button, what should be done? So you could see over here, there is something called a file being specified. Document.location is called to default dot ESP. What you should be when you click on the button, what action should be done, right? So who is basically handling this action? So on click, this particular part has to be done. So that's basically comes into picture your JavaScript into picture comes in picture that which part there are other methods when when you complete form then we'll see that is these other parts but yes and then you have titles right to can specify for a link the title right go through see It's a, it's a kind of tooltip, right? That when you click, uh, move your mouse over here, it will go give you some additional information. So it's a kind of tooltip you can uh, for the reference links. Title attribute. Title attribute we have also been using for paragraphs. You remember. Let us move directly tables, HTML tables. We all are aware of HTML tables. This is the most difficult part which I uh, see when we write this HTML code, arranging the tables, even that's fully difficult of uh, drawing the table in your latex also. So this is the difficult, but now there are many tools available uh, for, for HTMLs also, for uh, latex part also. During your projects, uh, if you you need to write your projects, in your projects you have to uh, draw your tables. But if you are, say for some kind of merging of the columns or merging of the rows, so you have a tools available, just copy paste your table over there and then it will generate your latex code. So I hope uh, similar things could be here. So HTML tables are similar kind of things here. Uh, how many number of uh, headings you want. So you can see here the HTML table, so table it, it starts from the element called table. It gives you the table data, table row. Table row is the first row where you specify the headings for the tables. So we have three columns. Table heading means here we have three columns, company, contact, and country. And then if you have three columns, then how many rows you are going to put. So for example, in this table, I'm going to put three rows, one row. So that's, that's why it's starting with table row. Even the heading, it is treating as one of the row, something under TR. There is There are two rows. In fact, there are three rows. One row is for heading, second row is for first actual data, then your second actual data. So table cells, basically content of the table cells is given with the TD tag. TD stands for table data and 
in between td but table row so we have just now done even uh, you can get rid of headings if you don't you are not interested in tables if you want to specify the headings you can use that ch tag instead of table data tag td could also serve the purpose but ch we are using headings yeah there are some other properties of the table that what should be the caption of the table it defines the caption for the table specifies the group of one or more columns in the table for it is column grouping footer content of the table you can specify the footer for a table so instead of the directly to column span and row span that's what the good part over here column span and row span is basically how you want is this a column span and row span because that the tags are self uh, from the latex nomenclature we are using so what a column span and a row span is basically it's about merging of rows and columns so what we are adding column span is two right so that means we are merging two columns with the same name could see here we are merging two columns with the header as name and then we have page over here row span if you want to merge two rows own let us try this row span so row number 1 and row number 2 so this is the another way of specifying the padding and spacing for table heading and table data to specify the padding here thtd bottom padding the sides padding top ht left right you can specify for a table styling like this for cell spacing would try this entire table where border spacing is 30 So if you use this equal to entire table, HTML list. ul tag under unordered list this we have seen bullet ordered list 1 2 3 4 if you want something to be numbered 1 2 3 4 ordered list description list different way of you are bulleting things so 
with this today we'll stop here and then we will uh, the next lecture we will finish off these uh, block elements classes and ids and frames and the dom element right with this we will be able to finish with our basic uh, tags of the html part any anything i i hope there are no th nothing as such to ask this but still please do refer these all pages of specifying things in static html we will be having this three parts are some of the important parts for instead of three these are basically three parts classes ids and frames mm -hmm. once we have done with this one then we'll start with the javascript part dom we will take similarly the dom part so, so these three classes ids frames and dom will take it in the next lecture so with this you will be able in a position to understand what the javascript is cuz javascript is basically using your dom model of the html to manipulate the you will convert convert your static content into dynamic contents right so it doesn't so your javascript doesn't understand this division tags and elements rather it understands objects so that's why for understanding so it's basically uh, helping the javascript to understand your html document or dom model these three four things we will take in the next lecture and then uh, html forms are also important so we'll see this html forms because until and uh, unless its forms are not studied will not be in position to process anything on the form we will not be in position to take users data and process or, or or supply that data to the javascript so these three four things we will uh, discuss in the next lecture anything else you you just try these things new the first assignment will not been framed but we to by the end is and i will frame the first as so so shall i end over here then any if you want not to ask anything so your whatever we will complete before the t1 whatever we have discussed in the class that would be the portion for your t1 i am repeating these things again and again I don't know whether you people are listening or not but please don't ask same things again and again um yesterday also i have told first two units will be the part for your t1 if no queries from your side related to exam then i could end the meeting